Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his Son. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Good morning. My name is Robert Bryden. I'm the pastor here at Unity Church of El Cajon. And it's such an honor to welcome you here for a service that we are giving thanks. This whole service is dedicated to giving thanks because we are in the midst of Thanksgiving season. It's a time when our nation comes together and gives thanks for all it has received, for God's love and life in our lives. And so we are truly grateful and truly blessed. And as we begin to give thanks, will you join me in prayer to give thanks? Mother, Father, God, we are so grateful for your presence in our lives. And we are so grateful that you've given us opportunities to give thanks. Let every moment, let every experience, let every connection that comes into our lives remind us of the gratitude in our hearts. The gratitude that our consciousness is unfolding here and now. And we give thanks. We give thanks for the blessings of this service. We give thanks for the blessings in each person's life who is watching this today. We feel your spirit, we feel this connection, and we give thanks. In the name and in the nature of the living Christ in all of us, we give thanks. Amen. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give them with a grateful heart give thanks to the Holy One give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his Son give thanks with a grateful heart give thanks to the Holy One give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son give thanks give thanks thank you Jody that was beautiful Today, it is our joy to honor and bless our ancestors, all of the people who came before us and made the life that we have today possible, all of the people who came before us and held the dreams that we fulfill and live. We honor them. Today we honor and bless ourselves and all the people that we have connections with in our lives. We are so grateful that we have had this opportunity in our lives to, to grow 
and to prosper and to experience a fullness in life. We are grateful that our children and our grandchildren are experiencing a fullness of life. We are grateful for the prosperity in which we live. We honor ourselves. We honor the people who are serving right here and now. And we are also able to bless the world and all that is to come as we join together and honor the lives that we are creating and the future that we hold for all of the generations to come. We bless this earth. We honor this season. We rejoice in all that is manifesting for all time ahead. Grateful for each hand we hold Gathered round this table From far and near we travel home Blessed when we are able Grateful for this sheltered place with light in every window saying welcome welcome share the feast come in away from sorrow daughter, son, neighbor, friend, and friendless, all together, everyone, the gift of loving kindness. so hard to be good to lead a life worth living father mother daughter son neighbor friend and friendless all together every Grateful days be endless. Grateful for each hand we hold. Gathered round this table. Thank you, Jody. That was beautiful. Thanksgiving is this week, and our reading today comes from a daily word from November 28, 1963. Thanksgiving. Our affirmation is, I praise God, the creator of all. And the reading, magical is the power of praise and thanksgiving, 
praise and thanksgiving lift me out of doubt and despondency. Praise and thanksgiving unlock an inner reservoir of joy and arouse enthusiasm. Praise and thanksgiving make me more conscious of God's presence. Praise and thanksgiving cause blessings to appear. Praise and thanksgiving help me to discover blessings that I had hitherto overlooked. I resolve to live in the spirit of praise and thanksgiving. I resolve to be grateful and appreciative of every blessing, great or small, that comes to me. I praise and give thanks for every prayer that has been answered. I praise and give thanks for all of the blessings that have come into my life. I praise God and give thanks for even invisible blessings, for these too will become visible as evidence of God's love. I praise God, the creator of all. I praise and give thanks for his plan of good for me and for all. From Psalms 26, 7, that I may make the voice of thanksgiving to be heard. I invite you to just allow that feeling of thanksgiving to be upon your shoulders and in your mind as you relax with me into a time of meditation. I invite you to close your eyes if that's comfortable, to sit back and take a breath with me. And let us breathe in gratitude and breathe out a blessing. As we are aware of our breath, breathing in gratitude, let us remember all of the blessings in our life. Let us remember the first time we got to see our most beloved pet. Let us be grateful for the love that we share. Let us remember the first time that we held a child, that we kissed our love, that we woke up to the sunrise. Let us remember. And as we breathe in gratitude, let us breathe through blessings. And let us imagine all of the wonderful gifts that are coming all of the moments that are waiting to happen. Let us imagine what it will be like to be together again. What it will be like to hug, to laugh together. Let us imagine all of the blessings that are coming and give thanks. Breathing in gratitude, breathing out blessings. I invite you with a hopeful heart to bring yourself back to right here and right now breathing in gratitude and breathing out blessings. Truly, we have so much to be grateful for. 
When you're ready, open your eyes, smile and laugh and stretch and know you are a blessing and I am thankful for you. And so it is. Thank you, Linda and Jody. Will you join me in prayer? We are grateful to you, God, for this opportunity to share in truth. And we affirm that we are opening our hearts and our minds to experience your truth in deep and wonderful ways. That our awareness is growing, our consciousness is unfolding. And we give thanks for this opportunity you've given us. And we claim this in your precious name. Amen. And so the story goes. It was the day before Thanksgiving, and the butcher is just locking up when a man begins pounding on his front door. Please let me in, says the man desperately. I forgot to buy a turkey, and my wife will kill me if I don't come home with one. Okay, says the butcher, let me see what I have left. And he goes into the freezer and discovers there's only one scrawny turkey left. And he brings it out and he shows it to the man. That one's too skinny. What else you got, says the man. So the butcher takes the bird back into the freezer and waits just a few minutes and brings back the same turkey back out to the man to show him. Oh, no, says the man, that one doesn't look any better. You better give, me, give them both to me. This week, our nation will celebrate Thanksgiving. The origins of this holiday began when the pilgrims crossed the Atlantic Ocean from England, where they were experiencing religious persecution. And they arrived in a place now known as Plymouth, Massachusetts. This wasn't their intended destination. But the voyage was hard, treacherous, and dangerous. And they settled where they landed and endured a very harsh and brutal winter. In fact, 45 out of the 102 settlers perished that first winter, almost half. Yet in the spring, with the help from the Wampanoag Indians, they planted crops that came to fullness and that next autumn they had an abundant harvest. To honor this abundance, they held the very first Thanksgiving celebration where the pilgrim men and their invited guests, the Wampanoag men, feasted for three days. Now, no doubt, the women were preparing the feast, cleaning and serving, as was the custom in those days. Traditionally, as we gather for Thanksgiving, there's often a talk about what are we thankful for? This year, far fewer of us are gathering for obvious reasons, but still the question arises, what are we thankful for? This year, conditional gratitude or gratitude with the subtext may be expressed. If we were to compare the circumstances and the conditions in our world from last year at this time and to this year at this time, many of us, many of us would prefer how it was. We may find ourselves thinking or saying, all things considered, I'm grateful it wasn't worse. Now, conditional gratitude is like relative truth. It is conditional on circumstances outside ourselves. It's like conditional love. It values from how it serves us. If life is serving our desires and needs in a robust way, we are very grateful. If life is challenging and we feel stymied or unfulfilled, we are less grateful. And sometimes we've gone through trauma or severe hardship we might not feel any gratitude. Now, most of us have had exposure to both conditional gratitude and conditional love because it's common in the human experience. However, we are true students, and many of us are drawn to truth through the power and, the, uh, and attitude of gratitude. Now, it's been said that gratitude is a great mind magnet. It attracts good. It attracts good because by its nature, it is good. And we know that in the laws of the universe, like attracts like. 
In unity, we express it through this statement. Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. And this is also akin to what St. Paul said in Galatians 6, 7. For you reap whatever you sow. So gratitude is the quality of being thankful. How do we hold that quality in our lives? How does gratitude stack up in our list of priorities? Most true students I know hold gratitude as a way of life. We are aware of our thoughts and our feelings, and we are aware when we experience fear, and we are aware when we experience love. And the awareness of both propel us to a place of gratitude because we quickly go there. Many of us treat gratitude like a spiritual practice, like prayer and meditation, affirmations and forgiveness. Gratitude holds an important place in our awareness. I remember the first time I heard Oprah talk about a gratitude journal. Now, it was at a time when I was becoming aware of the importance and power of gratitude, but I was fully living conditional gratitude. If the sun was shining and it was a good day, and when the sun and when it was cloudy and cold, meh, you know, so it was conditional. Yet Oprah encouraged us to write at least five items that we were grateful for every day. At first, it was obvious partner, family, basic needs, employment, comforts. It was like that first level of awareness because I often complained about all those relationships in some form and fashion at the same time. And that was a most unhealthy habit. And then I grew into a deeper understanding as I allowed my consciousness to expand. My gratitude journal more from being a list of relationships and things I have or experience to a deeper pre appreciation about the many aspects of each item on the list. I went from being grateful for my family to identifying many wonderful traits and aspects of them and our relationship. In other words, I grew a deeper appreciation for them and their life's journey. And that morphed into a deep feeling of love for their lives and, and sharing this journey with them. The more I was exposed to truth, I came to understand how gratitude was key to my quality of life. Moreover, I came to know that conditional gratitude came from a conditional awareness of God. As a true student, I learned that God is not conditional. God is all love, not conditional love. God is all knowledge, not conditional knowledge. And God is everywhere present, not just some places some of the time. As a true student, we come to know that our lives unfold with purpose and in a relationship to our thoughts, feelings, and actions, and it reflects our choice. And because of this, my experience of God, good, is unfolding in its perfect way. And this is my source of gratitude. God is my source and the force in my life. God as my source is my source of gratitude. Not because of how something unfolds, but rather I'm aware of the consciousness of God that lives in, as, and through me. A shift in gratitude happens when we move away from being grateful for or because of a person, place, or condition, and we move toward being grateful from the consciousness of our spiritual nature. Eric Butterworth says that gratitude is causal energy. Gratitude causes things to happen. It shifts our life into a, a higher perspective. And most of us love our higher perspective. We see and experience a bigger picture in life. It lifts our awareness of spirit and opens us to the possibility. It's a source of creativity. When we live in gratitude, we know the human experience will change, but the absolute truth of God is always with us as a part of our spiritual being. Gratitude is causal because it creates change in our hearts and in our bodies and our minds. The story of Myrtle Fillmore, the co-founder of Unity, reminds us 
that her physical healing from tuberculosis was a result of prayer and the attitude of gratitude she held in consciousness. Attitude of gratitude is a generative and regenerative energy. Healings occur from this place of being, like in Myrtle, in, like in many of you. Many of us have experienced healing from this attitude of gratitude. It is a constructive energy. It builds ideas up. One of my favorite aspects of ministry is sharing this journey together. You show up with the love for God and good. You show up with your attitude of gratitude. You show up anticipating a growing awareness and expanding consciousness. And I'm doing the same. And together we're allowing gratitude to be a driving force in our lives. Our personal world changes from a focus on conditions. And sure, there will be challenges. That's part of the human experience. Gratitude helps us bounce out of the challenges and back into the awareness of the God, the good. We are open to the movement within our spiritual being. And gratitude coming up from our source, God, the universal power that indwells every atom of our solar system. Eric Butterworth shares a, a story about his life that captures the spirit of the attitude of gratitude. Reverend Butterworth writes, Praise God, I look back on a very happy life. My mind turns nostalgically to our mother. She was a great soul. She was great because she, had, she was able to face up to a very difficult life. He says, I had a father who was beloved but terribly irresponsible. He was a gambler, and he wasn't a very good one. He would get up to his debt and up to his ears in debt and mortgage the house out from under, under them and leave his mother and four children with no resources. And he emphasizes no resources. People today think they know what it, what it means to come from a poor place, to be hungry, to be without, but when you've been through an experience of no resources, not a penny in your pocket or a penny in the bank, nowhere to go, no food in the cupboard, you understand what penury experience is. And his mother experienced this often, but among bigger occasions, he remembered she had an unswerving conviction that the universe is always seeking to give you the fullness of life. She would always say of any need, I give thanks for abundance. I give thanks for healing. I give thanks. She always preceded her thought about anything that was a problem with that I give thanks. She was a natural truth student. She found truth over the back fence talking to a neighbor. They had many talks over the back fence, and both of them eventually went on to become ministers in truth. And at home, he said, they had many experiences of standing together in oneness, a prayer, often because there was a desperate need. Mother would gather the four of them together and they would hold hands in a circle and she would give thanks for divine order and for abundance and for protection. And one memorable experience, it was a Saturday afternoon and the Butterworth family were all working around the house, painting and gardening and cleaning up. And it was a lovely house. It was in a very exclusive neighborhood. And he had to emphasize that because it was probably an upper, upper class neighborhood, this beautiful house that they lived in. And no one knew other than these people, the Butterworths, were unusually industrious. Certainly no one would have thought that they were working on the yard because they had nothing else to do. The fact was that on this occasion, their father had gone off and left the family destitute. And his mother was always ingenious, resourceful. And he remembers that she went in one day and said, I'm going to find a house for us to live in. And she found an unrented house. And it was in need of repair because the, the man couldn't rent it. So he made a deal with the land, she made a deal with the landlord. He would provide the materials 
And they would do the work in exchange for living in the house rent-free. So they lived in this beautiful house as if they had abundance. It was all appearance. And the house next to them, which was really an estate, on that particular Saturday, there was a large garden party going on while they worked around the yard. And in the afternoon around supper time, they began to congregate as children are wont to do around the kitchen in the house, and they noticed nothing was going on. And the mother called them and explained that there was nothing in the cupboard. There was nothing to eat. She just said, join me in giving thanks. We know that this will work out. And Eric says he didn't think that any of them were ever concerned because his mother had a way of pulling them out of all these experiences. She had set the table and they laid out the best linens and silver and they were remnants of better days and eventually it became mealtime and nothing was there. So they sat around the table holding hands and mother said grace. And Eric says he remembers it was a little bit longer that day. Grace was. And the prayer was interrupted by a knock at the back door. And it was a maid from the garden party. She said her employer had asked her to come over and see if they would accept some of the leftovers from the party because she knew that they'd been working in their yard all day and didn't have time to prepare dinner. Well, graciously, they said that they would be happy to accept it. And very soon the table was laddened with silver bowls and tureens of warm and sumptuous food. And it was a lavish feast, dessert and hors d'oeuvres and everything. It was a very happy day at the Butterworths. It was only in retrospect that when he looked upon the experience with awe that he could say his mother did that sort of thing so often. She was always in tune with the divine flow and she knew that somehow it would always work out and it always did. And Eric says this, and I found this very important. If you have a grateful heart, you will never, can never be poor. And without gratitude, you'll never be rich. That sticks with me. If you have a grateful heart, you can never be poor. And without gratitude, you'll never be rich. And so today, as we prepare our national Thanksgiving celebration, let us remember to open our hearts and minds in consciousness of gratitude. Let us also remember something dear in Reverend Butterworth's story. When we live with the attitude of gratitude, We are always in a space of receiving. And we are always in a place of giving. Thanksgiving. Giving thanks. It's just what we do. Amen. Will you join me in prayer? We are thankful to you, God, for our lives. We are thankful that you gently remind us to live in this space of gratitude, that we are always giving thanks because we truly experience your abundance in every moment. We claim your blessings here and now for us, and we claim them for those we love We claim them for our nation as it heals, and we claim it for our world. And we claim this in the name and in the nature of the living Christ. Amen. This is the day that you have made Whatever comes I won't complain For all my hope 
is in your name and now your joy awaits my praise I give thanks for all you have done and I will sing of your mercy and your love your love is unfailing Lord I am grateful When I was down, you brought me out. You set my feet on higher ground. So here I stand. You are my God. His faithfulness, my solid rock. I give thanks for all you have done. And I will sing of your mercy and your love. Your love is unfailing. Lord, I am grateful. I give thanks for all you have done. I won't forget all the battles you have won. Your love is unfailing. Lord, I am grateful. As we lift our hands up, heavens open, the heavens open. So let our lives declare the love our God has spoken over us. And as we lift our hands up, the heavens open, the heavens open. So let our lives declare, oh, your love our God has spoken over us. I give thanks for all you have done, and I will sing of your mercy and your love. Your love is unfailing, Lord, I am grateful. I give thanks for all you and I won't forget all the battles you have won. Your love is unfailing. Lord, I am grateful. Your love is unfailing. Lord, I am grateful. Wow, thank you, Jody. That was great. Now is our time of abundance. Today we are blessing your offering of service, talents, all of the ways that you give, not only to our ministry, but to the world. And even though we aren't in person today, we know that you are with us. We feel the gifts that you give us, that you bring us. I invite you to join with me in our blessing. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And we know this is the truth. <clears throat> uh, Place of Faith will be filming today also, and you can watch that live on YouTube, just like you have with this service. We invite you with both services to comment and like us and share us. This is an opportunity that we can Reach out and be a part of the lives, not only of you, but of your loved ones. We have a telephone outreach ministry. If you're not aware of this, we hope that you will be. And that you'll contact the office. If you would like to be called, 
uh, once a week. Make sure that we have your name and number, and we will find a volunteer to make, make contact with you, reach out, pray with you, help you hold in prayer whatever's on your heart or on your mind. <clears throat> we are also so happy to have volunteers helping us to reach out and stay connected with all of our congregation in these unusual times that we're experiencing together. We want to give thanks to the worship team that is working here behind the scenes, in front of the scenes, to bring this message to you. We want to give thanks to Phil and Becky Rokel for all that they do, for their kids who help out too. We want to give thanks to Barbara Depp, my husband, who they're training to be of help, to the ushers, to the staff, to all the people that come together to bring this message to you. And we want to give thanks to you too. And now we will have the peace song. <laughs> let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God as creator, family all are we. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me, let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my joyous vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Will you join me for the prayer for protection? The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Dear ones, have a wonderful Thanksgiving. We love you. We miss you. We bless you. We behold the Christ in you. And we send you our love. Thank you for joining us and let's stay connected and grow in spirit. We are on Facebook, search for Unity Church of El Cajon and follow us and like our posts. You can reach us on YouTube at Unity Church of El Cajon. Please subscribe to our channel, watch our videos, and leave comments, which can help us improve. We are on the web at unityofelcajon.org. Email or call our church office to receive our weekly newsletters, which lists all of our activities and opportunities to learn and grow together.